So when we start looking at now how we are going to actually sample this soil for the biology present in the soil, we're going to go over and get a slightly different instrument. We're going to get this uh, really expensive high-tech piece of equipment called an apple core. Now apple cores come in a variety of different configurations. So, you know, which one do you want to buy? Well, this is, this one is a perfectly good. Uh, we've got teeth on here that are going to help us when we push this down into the soil and go round and round and round as we're going through, just like going through an apple. Uh, we're going to push down through the soil about three inches, five centimeters or three inches. So we're going to go to the top of that apple core and there's our core of soil. Now, we want to look at soil. So if we're dealing with something that's got significant thatch on it, so look at the thatch on that soil. We want to pick that up, we want to push it to one side, because we're not going to be measuring the O horizon, we want to get to soil. And by definition, soil is sand, silt, clay, organic matter, and organisms. So we've got to get through that thatch layer, push it aside so that we're not measuring the biology in that thatch. The biology in that thatch is not likely to be very good. It needs to have decomposed through the wintertime and you can see a lot of lack of decomposition in this turf, which is one reason why we've got the patches, we've got weeds, we've got disease problems. So this soil, just by looking at it, you can tell that this needs some help biologically. But what biology do we need? So that's what we're really interested in figuring out this way. What we want to do is, is pull this thatch aside. So all this dead grass material, um, pull it aside so we're actually down on the surface of the soil. So we've got some, you know, there we got a weed plant. We don't really hear our purpose is not to figure out what's the biology around the weed. We want the biology around our grass plants. So let's go over here where we've got nice grass. We're just going to start pushing that into the soil and turning. So we cut the roots of our grasses, pushing down all the time. And remember, we've got some fair amount of compaction here. So we're going to have to be pushing down three, 200 PSI, remember? And uh, it can take a little bit of effort to get that push down in there. Just keep spinning it, cutting those roots, getting through any rocks that you're um, encountering till you can see that your um, apple core is down there flush with the surface at about three inches and then you just just uh, pull the core right on up and there's your core. We have our core with the organisms down to that three inch depth. We can be looking at how far down are the roots of the grasses going and I can't see any grass roots down any deeper than right about there. So that's our root depth. When you think about how far down roots of grasses can go, and you see that these roots aren't going more than about maybe an inch, inch and a half into the soil, right there Mother Nature's telling you there's a terrible problem in the soil. We do not have healthy grass. It is not going to be growing without the use of pesticides or inorganic fertilizers or any other toxic material until we fix the biology in the soil. We form structure, we get the roots growing deep down into the soil. Grass like this, when we're dealing with rye grasses, when we're dealing with uh, Kentucky Blue or the rye grasses, the typical lawn grasses, their root system should be able to go down at least 5 to 15 feet into the soil. And if they're not going down that deep, you know you've got a soil problem. You don't have the right biology. Okay, now how do we take this core and uh, get it into the laboratory? We need to have a little plastic baggie. So here we go. Magically the plastic bag shows up. And we've got a, we want to have a marker. So we will mark on this bag where this sample comes from after we get the core inside that bag. So we're just going to Put that core inside and we're just going to push that material off the, out of the core. Be a little careful for your fingers because remember those are uh, teeth at the bottom of the core and they can kind of do a job on your fingers. So you just get it out. All of that soil goes into your 
plastic baggie and now we would mark on the plastic bag exactly what this turf is. So turf and then label where it came from in this particular instance, the house that we're right next to. So we can always remember where this particular sample came from. We'll put the date on here as well so we know the date that this was taken. So there we go. And the year, so all properly marked up so we will remember where this comes from. Now, we've taken one sample out of this turf. What if this particular area is where cat peed last night? What if this is where the dog vomited last week? What if this is where somebody buried the pet a hundred years ago? It might not be representative of this whole turf area. So we probably need to be taken at least two more cores from within this area. The second core, where are we going to take the second core? Well, the first one we picked a nice, healthy grass plant to sample from. So our next sample should be randomly taken from out here near a healthy plant. We're not going to go into a place where you can clearly see that there's disease, where there's pest problems. So this would be a sample for as healthy turf as occurs out here. Well, maybe we want to know what the problem is in the area that you can clearly see there are disease and pest problems. We might take three cores from the diseased areas where we've got problems, clearly have problems. We might, might want to take some samples up near a tree or up near one of the other shrubs, and that would be a separate sample. But all of them would be taken the same way. I might want to come over here and take a sample from around the crabgrass and find out what's supporting the growth of the crabgrass right here as opposed to the grass that we want to have. So there's a number of ways, of st number of ways to stratify your sampling so we could be asking different questions. With the turf, I would, uh, healthy turf, I would pick at least two more places to take cores and put those cores right into the same container so that we would have a good representative sample. That's it.